Over on our sister channel, Cinema Sins, they take a few sins off for classics right at the beginning because they are just that f***ing good. We've never done that because we're sending single episodes. But this show and episode are so good that if we don't take off a few right now, we're going to spend the entire episode in awe of the acting, writing, emotion, and relevant historical context of this spectacular show. So we'll return five sins now so we can start nitpicking the hell out of all the stuff later that probably doesn't even matter. I hate circle wipes. Circle wipes aren't for shows and movies, they're for when you just had a bad Taco Bell experience and don't know where to begin. Just remember, outside in, front to back, and you'll be fine. How very convenient that he just happened to lasso him in front of this church for maximum story and symbolic effect. Reading. Movie theaters post-2020. This event actually happened. Fair enough, Cinny, but considering the show is actually confronting it head-on and thematically wrestling with the depth of racism in America throughout, shouldn't those be sin removals? That's what I thought. You might think I'd send plastic lids for all the time they've refused to do their job and deluged our collective laps, but this was clearly the driver's fault for power squeezing his cup and flipping his lid. Probability of drugs and or alcohol in the subject's vehicle. High. Probability of firearms and or explosives in the vehicle. High. Answering telephone customer service surveys. Not using bulletproof glass for all police cars in Redford's America. Tossing salad without consent. This Yip I O E A does not feature a John McClane or even a mother -fucker. K L A H O N A. Spelling your state like that makes you more important. Looking at you too, Ohio. Also, unless I miss the extended farting solo, this is really the worst version of Uncle Fucker I've ever heard. Why in Christ's name would they start this? Up again. Yeah, who would have thought violent racist would violate the unspoken pact via ordinance that's kept the peace for three years? They're usually so good with following government mandates. Convenient news position of Dr. Manhattan on Mars is convenient. If we don't have walls, it all comes tumbling down. But John Mellencamp, when he was still rocking the cougar in the middle, told me that the walls themselves come tumbling down. Which makes more sense because without walls, what exactly is there to tumble down? This is a metaphor of lies. Ta da! What are those kids wowing about so intensely? The show's incredible use of eggs as a metaphor and story device and the way these yolks end up looking like the famous Watchmen smiley? I agree it's impressive, but how do the kids know that? I was one of the cops who got attacked on the white night. And that was before police officers were allowed to wear masks. You see, children, career day exposition is the sneakiest exposition of all. Because it not only allows your character to give important information to the audience, it also does it in a setting where spelling out the details and dumbing it down makes complete sense. It smells. Look, punk, your mom just cleaned that nasty squid off the windshield and you didn't help because you don't like the smell? This sin is for your shellfish motives. This article reads that the victims of vandalism are pictured above. However, not pictured, pictures. Hey, that was nice of them to let Martin Scorsese add some artwork he made shortly after the 1980 Oscars. Boy, social media wars are really getting intense, huh? Arriving after the movie has already started. It's my funeral. Surprise main character death in the first episode shadowing is my favorite kind of shadowing, but it's still shadowing nonetheless, and you know what we do in the shadows. Howdy. Wade looks like Destro, and I can literally see nothing else when I have to look at him. And in a show this good, this is what counts as a sin. I'm just gonna ask you a series of questions. Answer them honestly, and you can go home. Answering in-person customer service surveys. <laughs> Holy cows. They got a f***ing plane. Did Nash Bridges and his cavalry not do any recon before storming the ranch? They had a small cover over it, but you can still tell it's a plane and it's out in the open. F***ing coward. What are the others? Maybe you should figure that one out before taking your masks off? Is it a special occasion? Of course it is, Master. It's your anniversary. Even the Great Watchman isn't immune from a case of the man forgets his own anniversary cliche. For he's a jolly good fellow, for he's a jolly good fellow. Singing a cappella but not adding a harmony part. That is a horseshoe, Mr. Phillips. Jeremy's Iron would be excellent at TV sins. Watching Watchmen, which is watching a man watch a man watch a watch, which man mended whilst man wasn't watching man watch watch mending. Nobody hates Oklahoma. Cornhusker deniers. The clock is ticking. Ah, sudden end of the episode narration. I don't care that it's narration within a trailer for a movie that's within the show. That's narrationception. Of course he's the kind of jerk that answers the phone without pausing what's playing on the television. Just be like the rest of us and send those troglodytes that still make phone calls to voicemail so we can keep watching reality television. It's called being polite. Also, landlines. I am full of confidence. Yeah, I noticed someone coming out of your nose at dinner. 
It's been a tough week. Look, I've seen this tried as an excuse for snorting cocaine, and I can tell you it rarely works. Like, maybe 12% of the time. Just tell her you picked up some during your vice beat. She'll totally believe that. I'm going to change into my uniform. Changing into your military dress uniform before getting killed, cliche. Having this long of a driveway really feels like it should be a sin. What kind of snollygoster needs this long of a driveway? And yeah, yeah, they've got farmland in the front. Put all your animals and shit in the back. Who do you think you are, J.R. Ewing? Now, 30 years of Redford, and what have we got to show for it? And think of all this world missed out on. Sneakers, Spy Game, uh, The Horse Whisperer, and Spy Game. Oh, shit, I said that one already. Well, missed out on sneakers. What? I know they were just getting it on pretty hard and all, but Cal looks like he was just dipped in melted butter. I haven't seen muscles this slick since the fate of the Furious. But it's summer and we're running out of ice. You use the name of the episode in a powerful fashion right before the credits roll, and it completely ties everything in your episode up in such a perfect way that even the big twist becomes more intricate and brilliantly foreshadowed in hindsight. Dang it, Watchmen, even your roll commercials moment is genius and fresh. It. Roll commercials in reverse. All right now, get mad at them damn days. There's this proud moment in every content creator's life when their creative offspring head out on their own channel adventures and don't need Papa CinemaSins anymore. Well, that. Don't you forget we're all started and get your ass back over to CinemaSins before dark, damn kids. Can I take a look at your face? You want me to call in Red and Night? No. Let him sleep. She gonna be pissed. Joylessly masturbating to pictures of dead deer. The New York Times is calling it the most important television event. It's almost time, kids. The clock is ticking. Be in front of your TV sets for the horathon. So roll into Nixonville and round them up and drag their asses into the pod for interrogation. You burned your last burrito. That's a lot of cows. Hey.